Today's episode is sponsored by Magellan TV. It's an ordinary day for Dr. Emmanuel Ngum B on August 22, 1986. The chief of the Saboom Village's health center in northwest Cameroon has spent the previous day in a nearby town and is traveling back home on his bicycle. The morning trip is no different from any other B has taken before. However, he will remember this journey for the rest of his life. It all starts when Mbi bumps into a dead antelope. He doesn't find it too unusual. He ties the antelope to his bike and carries on. But as he continues his journey, Mbi notices more dead animals lying by the road. Now, this is an unusual sight. The doctor rushes to the tiny village of Neos near the lake of the same name to find answers. What he finds instead is a horror movie-like scene. Dead villagers are lying all over the place as if some invisible force has killed them. There is not a single living soul to find. Mbi is both bewildered and frightened. What he didn't know was that a veil of death had spread across the entire Lake Neos Valley, killing more than 1,700 people. What he initially thought to be an oddity was an event that triggered the attention of the whole world, aiming to reveal what caused this mysterious tragedy. Flustered by what he saw, Mbi rushed back home to Womb where he'd worked the night before to report the disaster he'd witnessed to his superiors. The work of the peculiar event spread to the governor of the Northwest region and quickly reached the president, Paul Bia's office. Bia ordered immediate action, but Lake Neos is located in the remote northwestern part of the country. Subsequently, it took two days for the Cameroonian army troops and medical teams to reach the villages caught in the disaster. Once they arrived, they too found an apocalyptical scene. Most affected were the villages of Neos, Saboom, and Cha. Dead bodies were scattered all over the settlements. While some of the deceased were lying around the huts, others were found in nearby streams and further in the forest, indicating they were running away from something. Contrary to them, other victims were found lying in their beds, as if they never knew what hit them. They all had their clothes covered with these puzzling greasy red stains and seemed to have died from suffocation. Livestock, wildlife, and even insects were all decimated by this mysterious source of death. All life in the valley was extinguished with nothing indicating the source. The period of initial shock didn't last long. Due to fear of an epidemic, the government ordered all bodies to be burned in mass graves as soon as possible. Four days and nights, soldiers dug burial pits not even counting the number of bodies they buried. Further from them, army bulldozers dug giant holes to dispose of dead animals. Some 300 people that survived the disaster required urgent treatment and were transferred to the hospital in the nearby town of Nkambe. Survivors suffered from dizziness and breathing problems and had skin lesions similar to burnings. Curiously, most of those who escaped death were farmers on the hills above the main villages. At the same time, the government started a massive relocation campaign for locals. Whatever the reason behind the disaster, the authorities feared it could still impact people's health and lives. For this reason, it decided to seal the area off. More than 4,000 people were relocated to temporary resettlement camps in the first week after the disaster. For half of them, the resettlement became a permanent measure as their lives back home no longer existed. Soon, the scale of the disaster caught the attention of the international community. Large shipments of food and medical supplies from around the world were sent to Cameroon. International medic teams arrived to help treat the injured. A group of American scientists also went to the country, but for a different reason. They were attracted by the peculiarity of the event wanted to discover what caused such an unprecedented and, above all, mysterious tragedy. Their discovery was a surprise no one expected. It made the Lake Neos disaster one of the strangest in the history of humankind. 
for the local population, there was no doubt, the lake was cursed. Three years before the disaster, a prominent tribe chief named the Lake Chief had died. On his deathbed, the Lake Chief designated his best cow to be used for ritual sacrifice. After his death, however, the chief's relatives were reluctant to give away their best cow and substituted it with a smaller one. It was believed that from the afterlife, the late chief was furious and the disaster resulted from his wrath. The scientists, too, believed the lake had something to do with the disaster, but were not so convinced by the might of the late chief. The first lead in discovering the roots of the tragedy was the fact that the majority of the deceased lived within the 12-mile area along the valley running east and west of Lake Neos. The further the scientists went from the lake, the lower the number of casualties. Their doubts were supported by the survivors, who testified that on the night of the tragedy, they heard a series of rumbling sounds coming from the lake. The thunder lasted for a few minutes and was followed by a strong odor similar to gunpowder, rotten eggs. For most witnesses, that was the last thing they remembered as they fell unconscious and didn't wake up until the next day. In the end, the lake's appearance assured the scientists that something strange had happened to it. Lake Neos, known for its clear blue color, was completely red. To make things more clear, Lake Neos is different. It's a crater lake that is formed on the top of an inactive volcano in the Oku volcanic plain. With its bed connected to a large magma chamber beneath the ground, Lake Neos is one of three lakes in the world known to be saturated with carbon dioxide. Like most lakes, it is thermally stratified, which means it has a layer of warm water floating on a layer of colder, denser water. In typical lakes, these layers mix due to changes in their temperature caused by rain, cold weather, and wind blowing across the water surface. However, in the case of Lake Neos, because of the tropical climate conditions, the temperature of the water is unusually consistent from the surface to the bottom. As a result, layers don't mix, which stops the carbon dioxide on the bottom of the lake from reaching the surface and escaping into the air. Instead, it accumulates and is dissolved in the water due to high pressure at the bottom of the lake. Now, there is a limit for the carbon dioxide accumulating at the bottom of the lake. When it becomes too high, it rises to upper levels and comes out of the solution due to lower pressure. It only takes a minor disturbance for carbon dioxide to burst to the surface and out into the air, causing the so-called limnic eruption. Test water samples taken from Lake Neo showed abnormally high levels of carbon dioxide, a piece of evidence pointing to limnic eruption. The red color of the lake was further proof in support of the claim. It turned out to be dissolved iron. Only limnic eruption could bring iron sediments to the surface after being stirred up from the bottom of the lake. A similar eruption occurred on August 15, 1984, in Lake Manone, 18 miles from Lake Neos. The scale of the disaster was far lower, though, with 34 people killed. Years after the incident, some European scientists claimed that the Lake Neos disaster resulted from a gas-rich volcanic eruption. Still, the theory was overthrown by a series of studies supporting the limnic eruption. Based on the calculations made by the scientists, the limnic eruption of Lake Neos was one of horrifying scale. It released about 100,000 to 300,000 tons, or 1.2 cubic kilometers of carbon dioxide into the air. In addition, the eruption created a 330-foot-tall column of water and an 82-feet-tall wave that swept the lake shore. The eruption released other gases from the lake as well as sulfur dioxide and hydrogen sulfide, hence the smell of rotten eggs that the survivors reported. The released carbon dioxide formed a 160-foot-thick cloud of gas that spread across the valley at the speed of 12 to 30 miles per hour. Even though carbon dioxide is present in the air we breathe, it can still be toxic in higher concentrations. Being a heavier compound, it completely displaces the oxygen the human body needs. Without oxygen, the human organism slows down and does not function properly. 
An air mixture containing 10% carbon dioxide can cause convulsions, comas, and death. Imagine 300,000 tons of carbon dioxide spreading across the Lake Neos Valley. The chances of survival were minimal. The result of the Limnic eruption was devastating. No physical damage was done to objects in the area, but most life was destroyed. The UN Disaster Relief Coordinator in Geneva put the final death toll at 1,746, even though the number might be much higher. Around 3,500 livestock were also killed, making the disaster a complete humanitarian catastrophe. Years after, one thing that baffled the scientists was what initiated the eruption. There were several theories including a landslide, an earthquake, and a cooling of the upper layer of water by massive rainfall in days before the disaster. However, there is no clear evidence of what triggered the carbon dioxide eruption to date. The only conclusion the scientists could make was that Lake Neos was again accumulating carbon dioxide. With the mechanism behind the gas eruption still unknown, disaster could strike again. When it comes to how to prevent future eruptions, scientists came up with a surprisingly simple but life-saving solution. Before we get into that, I want to tell you about today's sponsor. Do you like disaster documentaries like this one? Then Magellan TV is for you. I just finished watching In Search of Air France Flight 447. This well-researched documentary follows the cutting-edge search mission after the flight disappeared over the South Atlantic. Now for the first time, footage from the investigation has been made available. I enjoyed watching the story of an aircraft lost and found in the middle of nowhere. Magellan TV is the documentary streaming service founded by filmmakers. When you sign up, you can choose from over 3,500 hours worth of full-length documentaries and 15 to 20 new episodes are added every week. As a result, Magellan TV has the most varied history content available anywhere, covering ancient to modern history, science, space, and more. You can watch on your TV, laptop, or mobile device for as low as $4.99 per month. Magellan TV is offering dark history viewers the first month of streaming for free to watch In Search of Air France Flight 447 and the rest of their extensive collection of history content. Click the link in the description to start your free month of documentaries today. After the disaster, scientists spent 10 years trying to find a solution to avoid a repeat event. The most promising solution was to install platforms with degassing tubes. The mechanism consisted of tubes reaching just above the lake floor and a water pump. The pump would lift the water saturated with carbon dioxide from the bottom to the surface. Once the pressure is low enough, the carbon dioxide would come out of the solution and safely spread into the open air. The first tube was installed in 1995 and assured the scientists the plan might work. Another tube was installed in 2001 and two more in 2011. The system allowed releasing the amount of carbon dioxide equivalent to the amount of gas that accumulates at the bottom of the lake. It was a simple yet effective way to prevent a new disaster similar to the one in 1986. Today, Lake Neo still has the same iron-red color it turned after the Limnic eruption. The lake valley lies empty with ruins of once prosperous villages. Watch this episode next if you found this video interesting. Please add a like and leave a comment if you want to support the channel.